This program is brought to you by Emory University. I grew up in Atlantic City, New Jersey, at a time when Atlantic City was still uh, struggling. There was a lot of poverty. Um, there was a lot of race and ethnic conflict. This was before casinos came to Atlantic City, although I'm not sure that casinos have uh, improved things very much. And uh, I attended the one high school, in public high school in Atlantic City. And there was um, a lot of conflict, a lot of crime and delinquency in that high school. Um, and I drew very much on those experiences uh, when I came to criminology. And I focus especially on the causes of crime and delinquency, although I do some work on controlling crime. And I'm best known for my work in what's called general strain theory, which essentially argues that certain strains or stressors increase the likelihood of crime. Stressors, strains like uh, economic deprivation, discrimination, um, criminal victimization, um, harsh erratic discipline, child abuse, neglect, and so on. And they increase the likelihood of crime through several mechanisms. They foster a range of negative emotions, anger, frustration, depression, and that puts people under a lot of pressure to take corrective action, and sometimes crime is one of the ways in which they cope. Most people who experience strains don't cope through crime, so general strain theory also looks at some of the factors that increase the likelihood that people will cope with strains through crime. Factors like poor coping skills and resources, low levels of conventional social support, beliefs that are favorable to crime, membership in delinquent peer groups and gangs, and so on. So that's where I do most of my work, and I continue to do work on general strain theory. I think that's what I'm best known for in the discipline of criminology, and that probably more than anything else uh, is what helped me get elected as president of the American Society of Criminology. But I also work in other areas. So right now, for example, uh, I'm doing some work on the relationship between climate change and crime. And this stems in part out of my experience uh, with the Piedmont Project here at Emory. And I've had a long-term interest in climate change. Decided to um, ask whether there's any way that I might combine that with my interest in criminology. And the more I looked at the literature, the more I thought about it. I came to um, believe that crime, climate change will become one of the major, if not the major, forces driving crime as the century progresses. So I'm doing some work there. I also just finished a book that looks at some of the underlying assumptions of crime theories. Assumptions like the nature of human nature, free will versus determinism, the nature of society, and, and so on. Um, a project that led me to uh, look at work in a variety of areas, both uh, in sociology and outside of sociology, psychology, biology, philosophy, and so on. So I do work in a number of different areas, but pretty much all that work focuses on the causes of crime to a lesser extent efforts to control crime. The American Society of Criminology is the leading organization for academic and research criminologists in the United States and in fact the world. It has, I guess, four to five thousand members and I'm very honored to be elected uh, president of the American Society of Criminology and among other things I will preside over the annual meeting of the American Society of Criminology in 2013, November 2013. By coincidence, that meeting will be held here in Atlanta, downtown at the Marriott Marquis. And uh, that meeting will probably feature 900 or so sessions where in each session several criminologists present their research on various aspects of crime, a range of workshops, keynote addresses, and so on. Also, as president, I help oversee the many activities of the organization. Among other things, the American Society of Criminology publishes seven journals, including Criminology, the top journal in the field, and Crime and Public Policy, the top crime policy journal in the field. We also offer a range of services to our members, including teaching services, methods, methodological workshops. We engage in a variety of policy-related activities, congressional briefings, for example. Uh, providing information to a variety of organizations, responding to requests from the news media, and so on. So again, it's an honor to be elected, and, uh, and I'm looking forward to the 2013 meeting here in Atlanta. The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.